Hello, welcome back to another video. This one is gonna be a follow-up to all the other home lab videos. I feel a little bit better, hopefully less coughing. There might be a little bit, but uh, we're gonna try our best. So last one, I talked about both how I set up my environment for Docker and how I set up the environment for Kubernetes. Now, Docker is pretty straightforward. Um, once it's set up for Docker and you have everything swarmed together, you just start putting containers on it, whether you want to do that through a command line or whether you want to put Portainer on it and do it through a GUI, that's kind of up to you. For Kubernetes, it's a little bit different. So I'm using K3S. I will leave the link to it down below if you want to read about it, but K3S is basically a lightweight version of Kubernetes that comes a little bit with a little bit less stuff, but can ideally do the same thing as Kubernetes. So a big struggle that a lot of people run into and that I ran into is setting up a version of Kubernetes on your lab at home that at least sort of matches Kubernetes that you would get from AWS or Linode or Azure or anybody else. So on that note, what I ended up using is there is a content creator called TechnoTim. I'm going to put his stuff in the description as well. He's a very good uh, this I use a lot of his stuff and he's great so I'm gonna put his channel below that's where I got a lot of this stuff but this repository here is the one that I'm using and this guy is actually took something that Techno Tim did and then kind of remade it and I like this version a little better because it puts stuff on there that I like it basically just puts a few extra things on there but all this is is it's an Ansible thing that will actually just build you a highly available Kubernetes cluster using K3S, KubeBip, and MetaLB, and it uses Ansible. So it's a script to basically spin everything up for you. All you need is the nodes to put it on. So, and I will also link that repository in the description as well. So what I have is, as you can see, I have these templates here are templates that I talked about in the last video for Kubernetes nodes. All I did is spin up three masters and three workers, as you can see they're named, and they're running. Now, since I already did what I talked about in the last video and set up a template, all I had to do was do full clones and then spin them up and they're ready to go. I didn't have to go through and configure each one of them. Everything's perfect. So after I get those three nodes running, the only thing I really need is you can download or clone, obviously, this Git repository, and it will look something like this. And really all that matters, you can use the scripts that they this person brings with it. For instance, the first one you would run is the repo init. All it actually does is it copies this inventory dash sample into inventory my cluster, right? Because it gives you a sample of what you might want. But really what you go here is you go into inventory and you make, <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be called my cluster, but it can be. And you make a cluster and you're just putting in things. So the first thing you wanna put in here is your host.ini. So for me, like I said, let me go back here. I made master one, master two, master three, and then I made a worker one, worker two, and worker three. So all of those have IP addresses and that translates to this. So these two IP addresses are the IP addresses of my two actual Proxmox nodes. And technically this is only required if you're using LXC containers, which I am, but otherwise, I just spin up the LXC container and do an IP space A or an IP config, depending on your operating system, whatever. And what will happen is you can find the IP on your local network, grab the IP. My three masters are here. My three workers are there. That's the beginning. The next thing you go to is in group vars right here. Again, I, you know, will use this because it's in Proxmox, but you don't really have to touch it. But the next thing is this alls.yaml. And all you have to do is you can go through and I can go over some of the stuff, the stuff that like I messed with, but you put in your K3S version here or leave it the same. The, the main user, the Ansible user, which is basically the user for your LXC container. So if you kept them as root, then it's root. If you made the user something else, then the user something else. Put in your time zone, put in your preferred uh, interface, mine is each zero. <coughs> and then here, you wanna pick something on your local network that you want kubevip to make the IP address of your actual Kubernetes API. So that when you use kubectl and stuff like that, that's the actual API server endpoint that it will put to that. This you'll wanna obviously change. And again, I'm gonna tear down this, this environment after I show you guys, so it's not that big of a deal, but this is your K3S token that you'll use to connect to the master cluster. And then I don't touch that, don't touch that, <coughs> excuse me. 
uh, your Cubit version, your Meta LLB type, which I would keep the same, Meta LLB version. This I also had to change. So your Meta LLB IP range, again, put that in something that's on my local network and I picked like 10 IPs here. So what this is actually gonna do is when you put something on your cluster, on an AWS cluster, for instance, and you wanna load balance it, like it says here, externally load balance it, AWS will give you a cloud load balancer to do that to work with your cluster, but obviously you don't have that locally. MetaLLB does that for you. So this will give my services running in Kubernetes an external load balancer to the internal services automatically. So this is basically how it will give all of my services external IP addresses. Now granted, those external IP addresses are only like on my local network still, but it gives me an IP address into the Kubernetes cluster. Again, I am using LXC containers, so I put this to true, and my LXC SSH user, and then again, you don't have to do this unless you're using LXC nodes in Proxmox, which I am. And then these IDs are actually the container IDs, as you can see here, so 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, right? Those are there. Again, I do wanna deploy traffic, which is internal and external ingress, and then I give those an endpoint. I want those endpoints, these two endpoints, you'll notice, are actually, I just picked the first two endpoints in my metal LB range, but you wanna make sure these two fall within those, right? And then here is I can actually give DNS names to some of the services that it's deploying. So the two services that it's deploying that it will need a DNS name for is actually Traffic and Rancher. So Rancher will also get deployed on your thing. That's one of the differences between the Techno Tim version and this version is this will actually deploy Rancher, which is basically a GUI to handle your Kubernetes cluster, and it will deploy it right on the uh, cluster for you automatically. So I give these two domain names for traffic, internal and external, and then Rancher gets a DNS name as well, cert manager version, use internal CA. So if you did have your own internal CA, you could use it, so it's not self-signed, all that kind of stuff. You can add custom registries and stuff like that. I just left this the same, and I don't use a proxy. now. Once you set this up, you should be good to go, assuming you have something similar to me. And he also, I changed it a little bit, so I don't have to use a password, but this, you can just run this command or you can run the script, but this is all this, this deploy script is doing, is it's just running Ansible playbook. So you do have to download Ansible before you run the Ansible playbook, obviously, but if you don't wanna run the script, again, I can just copy it right out of here and I can paste it. And all this is doing is it's gonna run my site.yaml, which is the playbook, uh, against the host.ini, which is the host uh, file we set up in the beginning, right? So the site.yaml here is what actually everything is gonna happen. These are the steps that are gonna take place and everything else. So if you look at this, uh, it's gonna prepare my Proxmox cluster, then it's gonna prepare K3S nodes, it's gonna set up K3S servers, agents, the cluster, deploy Helm for traffic and rancher, deploy cert manager, traffic internal, traffic external, and deploy rancher. That's what's gonna happen. So all I'm basically doing here is using that site.yaml that's telling Ansible what to actually do, and then and then I'm telling it the host dot the hosts that you're using are from the host.ini files. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna run it, and I'm probably just gonna pause it here. Like I said, it takes a little bit to run. I'm gonna pause it here and we can come back to it in a second. All right, so when you're done and that's done running, it'll look like this. You'll see everything happen. You'll see zero here failed, zero unreachable, all that stuff. So those, so these three things are normal. If you see something that says unreachable or failed, something probably went wrong, but everything else is normal. So there's that. Now, the next step, and you can get it from the readme <coughs> if you want to. It's in the readme of the thing. It says to get access to your Kubernetes cluster using the kube config, you just copy and paste this. Obviously, we can go up here a little bit. And I already did this before. So this is what it looks like for me. Uh, I'm just using the IP of one of my one of my three master nodes. It really doesn't matter. They all have the kube config on it, but you're just copying it over to my local so that actually once I'm done then, what I should be able to do is I should just be able to use my normal kube cuddle and get nodes. And there we go. I have three masters, three workers. Obviously the three masters here you can see, they have control plane, etcd, and their master nodes, and then the three worker nodes right behind them. They're all running the K3S version, bam. Now, if you do a cube cuddle oop, get services, you'll see that there is a cluster IP here. If we do get pods, there are no pods left. So basically, 
we have a running Kubernetes cluster. So now we can look at some of the things that are running on the Kubernetes cluster. So a good way to do that is just to run this command right here, which will just get services across all the namespaces and the wide will show you more. So if I do this, <coughs> I can see some of the stuff that's actually running. So I have a few different namespaces here. Obviously there's not much running in default, but in the cube system, there's traffic and traffic external, the metrics and the cube DNS. I have Meta LLB running, which looks normal. I have Cert Manager running, which looks normal. And then I have, of course, Rancher and Git Job running. And you will see here that I have external IPs for traffic right here. And that is a good sign. That means that basically I should be able to go into my host file here on Windows. And you can see I already have this set up here. I have Rancher set up to the same external IP because it will put that right on the same one through traffic. I had Grafana in a different version, but we don't really need that. But for demo purposes, you can see here. So my traffic internal and traffic external. So traffic internal is this 205 here. So when I pull it up, traffic external is 206, traffic internal is 205. So anything that I have hosted internal, I'm also just going to put a uh, point at that traffic endpoint, which is 205. But since I gave Rancher a DNS name in that configuration file, it configured Rancher to have the DNS name of rancher.goldeninternal. So when I save this, ideally in a perfect world here, I should be able to go here and do HTTPS a rancher golden internal. And obviously it's a self-signed certificate, so I have to accept it. But then here's my running version of rancher. And obviously since it's a new run, I would have to go through, copy this in here, make a new password and I'd have access to rancher, which I will do. So I copy that. I go back to my terminal. Did it actually copy? I thought it said it copied. There we go. Now I think it copied. There we go. So I go that again, you can try and do something with this if you want to, good luck. I'm just deleting it after, but you go in here, you put your password in, you log in with the local user. And then again, I can uh, set a specific password to use. Go here and we'll just use something normal. Uncheck that. What did I not? Oh, sorry, it's too short, whoops. What did I still do here? Oh, I have to accept, obviously, okay. There we go, go here, and there we go. So now you can see I have my local cluster, same Kubernetes version as before, 12 cores, six gigs of memory. And I can go in here and I can see all the stuff happening on it. Now again, obviously I, I built this for a demo, so I'm already like, I need a little bit more than six gigs of RAM to probably do stuff. But as you can see, you can go in here and see workloads, apps, services, all that kind of stuff. You can see all the nodes. So I can see my nodes here. I can see all the usage of all my nodes here. And then when you click into stuff, you can also see stuff that's actually deployed on those nodes. Their age, they're ready, all that kind of stuff. Again, a lot of this stuff, a lot of this kind of stuff won't need to be ran because it's just a run once kind of thing. But some of the stuff that is up like cert manager and rancher and metal B and stuff is running. And you can see how much of the memory I'm using. If we go back to another, now if I go to a master node, since there's normally a, uh, a taint setup on the master node, so I'm actually not deploying anything, but I'm not deploying like jobs and tasks and services and all that stuff on the master nodes. But again, here you can see traffic external and rancher, fleet controllers, all that kind of stuff. So again, this is basically just a GUI for uh, Kubernetes, but it's something cool you can do. Same thing here, I can go, <coughs> just like we were talking about, <coughs> excuse me, I should be able to go here and go to traffic. Again, accept the self-signed certificate and boom, there's also my traffic set up on my Kubernetes cluster locally down in my basement, which is super cool. You can see I have 100% success rate on my services, routes, all that kind of stuff. I can look, there's some of the services and stuff that I have, my routes that I have. So obviously it will accept traffic, it will accept rancher uh, and then ping and metrics, same thing rancher with the slash here and stuff. And again, you, you don't see traffic external. This is the internal version of traffic. So if I wanted something to be external, I would go to the external. Oh, I think I messed it up. I should go here, get rid of that. And I can go to traffic external as well, but it won't be up. Boom. So again, and when I say won't be up, I mean rancher won't be up. Sorry, I should be more clear with that, right? Because it's an internal thing. So my external one of traffic is running on a different IP. 
So now what I can do is if I want to use Cloudflare or something else and like do a Cloudflare tunnel or do something myself to make it public to the internet, <coughs> what I can do is I can just be like, okay, the only thing I want to the internet is my external stuff that I'm routing through external traffic. So I can just point it at this domain here or this IP instead of the domain, sorry, pointed at this IP, the 206 IP in this host file, you can see. So this is what I would put all of my external services behind. If I want to host my own website or want to host a Minecraft server or something like that, I can put it behind that traffic instance where anything that's internal to me, like for instance, my rancher, like I don't want to make my rancher public. I want it to be internal only on my local network. So that comes into the internal rancher or internal traffic, sorry. So that's what those two things are for, which is really cool. So there's an external version, internal version. It makes it very easy to decide. And then all I have to do is take this IP and point it to those things. And then in like a Cloudflare or anything else, I can point everything back to the external traffic. And I can know that anything that I'm putting in the external traffic will then be given to the internet. Now, same thing. If you're doing this in a test environment or you're spinning stuff up on this Kubernetes cluster and you decide uh, you want to clean it up, this repository makes it extra easy to do that as well. You can just go here and you can see one of the things here, there's a reboot thing here, which is an option, but the one that we're gonna use right here is the kill all, which just re uses the reset YAML, which just cleans up everything we've just done. So basically what I can do here is I can just do boom, boom, kill all, and all this stuff will run. This one actually runs pretty fast, so we don't have to do a little time skip on this one. And this will uninstall everything from the LXC containers, put it all back to where it was, all that kind of stuff. So it's obviously not deleting <coughs> the actual containers themselves. I'm still going to have the three uh, worker nodes and the three master nodes in my Proxmox. We'll go check after this, but they're basically going to be cleaned back to bare bones where they were before. So everything's done. This is all done. That's great. And obviously if I go back to Proxmox and relook, like they, they didn't go anywhere, right? They're, st they're still there. It doesn't delete the actual LXE container. It just cleans them back down to nothing, right? So if I go here and do cube cuddle git nodes, it's gone. So this was just a little video, again, for anyone who's building something at home, uh, you can throw, uh, I'm not sure if I've said this in other videos, but you can throw Proxmox on anything. You can basically anything, I should say, but like if you have an old laptop, you can throw Proxmox on it and turn it into like a little virtualization server. You can throw Proxmox on an old desktop. You can throw Proxmox on an actual server. You can buy a little mini PCs like I have and throw Proxmox on them. You can cluster them together. You can put a bunch of VMs on it. You can do this kind of Kubernetes stuff with it. You can do Docker stuff with it that I, you know, some of the other stuff that I do. There's all this amazing stuff. Proxmox isn't just for like the big enterprise server sitting in a rack. I, I don't even have that. But if you have Proxmox and it's, it's something you're interested in, in building a Kubernetes environment locally that you can deploy stuff on or, or play with stuff that actually looks very similar to a real environment with external load balancers and internal load balancers and high availability and all that kind of stuff. This is a good way to get a Proxmox server up and running, spin up some LXC containers, run one script after you put in like some IPs and a little bit of settings and boom, you're ready to go. So something to keep in mind, again, all the links to GitHub and, and uh, TechnoTim's YouTube and all that kind of stuff will be down below. Check that out. If you like it, let me know. Any questions, let me know. But that's it for now. Peace.